You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. Whoa, I got to uh, I got to turn down the headphones there. Um, <laughs> so I hope everybody had an awesome Fourth of July weekend. I feel like it's been forever since we talked and so much stuff has happened in the last few days since we've been gone. So uh, you have record heat ever set on planet Earth. And somehow it's snowing at the White House. (laughs) How that's possible, I don't know. Maybe we can ask Hunter Biden. That's right. So if you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard, there was cocaine found in the West Wing of the White House. And man, is this story getting interesting. I just find it really funny how the other side, the leftist Democrats, can try and the the amount of mental gymnastics it takes to think that this is anyone other than Hunter Biden, the one and only (laughs) cokehead and crackhead that we've ever had staying at the White House. And there just so happens to be a dime bag of cocaine at the White House. So (laughs) it's like I think President Trump said this, too. Like, why are we pretending that this is anybody but the Biden family. I mean, you can't. You can't sit there and deny. You got to have at least the the assumption that it's Hunter Biden's. I mean, just put all the information together that we have. You have Hunter Biden, who's had a long life of coke problems and crack problems. And then you have him living at the White House, which I didn't know he was living there. And when you go back and you look at different footage, he's always there in the background. And so to pretend like this is it's impossible for that to be Hunter Biden's cocaine is just bizarre. So this actually happened on Friday and MSNBC has just now decided to report on it. Trust me, they did not want to do this, but the story just got out of control and now they're forced to do it because this has never happened before. We've never had a dime bag of cocaine found in the presidential library. Well, they don't really know. Like always, we're not getting transparency on this. We're not getting truth. The Secret Service says they're going to look into the footage. But how long does that take to find out who who stashed a, a dime bag of cocaine in the, the White House? I mean, are we saying that security is that light that they don't know <clears throat> that they can't go back and find out who stashed a dime bag of cocaine? No, folks, they know. They know. And I'm telling you, I think it's probably Hunter Biden. That's why they are they are. um they're reluctant to let this footage out. And what I find funny, actually, you know what? First, let's just let's listen to MSNBC when they had to report on this dreadful story about a dime bag of cocaine being found in the White House. Here, check this out. Confirm the suspicion that that white powdery substance found in the West Wing on Sunday was, in fact, positive for cocaine. The discovery led to a brief evacuation of the White House Sunday night. Joining us now is NBC White House correspondent Mike Memoli. So, Mike. Where do things stand now? This is so unusual. You and I have covered the White House for years. I can't even fathom anything like this having been found before in the West Wing. And I go back to the 70s at the White House. So this is pretty, pretty wild. Pretty wild. It's absolutely extraordinary, Andrea. And this new conclusive test confirms what had been the preliminary field test conducted by D.C. fire personnel who were called in on Sunday night after the discovery of this suspicious substance by a uniformed officer in the Secret Service uh, that was conducting a routine patrol of the White House. And so, yeah, so you could hear the amazement in their voice on how how ecstatic they are to report on this story. (laughs) And trust me, if there was some way that they could have hid this from reaching the public, they would have. Because, look. Everybody knows that up to 2020, a vote for Biden was a vote for normalcy. 
I don't see anything normal about this family. I don't see anything normal about what we've experienced the last two and a half years from this family with the millions and millions of dollars from corrupt business deals by Hunter Biden and all nine of the family members except Joe Biden. You, you know, so the media and the White House want everyone to believe that Joe Biden has nothing to do with these business deals. And in fact, that's completely false because now you have whistleblowers, you have whistleblowers to whistleblowers, you have eyewitnesses, former business partners, you have documents, you have photos, you have videos, you have emails, you have receipts, you have a laptop with a hard drive with pictures. It is undeniable that Joe Biden knew and a likely participant in all these shady business deals. And so you, when you have millions of dollars being funneled through 20, 30 different LLCs all set up while Joe Biden was vice president and some set up after he left office, I mean, we would have to be living in an Orwellian, uh, uh, George Orwell's 1984 novel to actually believe that this is normal. This is not normal. Nothing about this is normal. And so you could hear it in their voice how, how happy they were to report on this. Trust me, folks, you and I both know that if the shoes were on the other foot and there was cocaine found in the West Wing during the Trump presidency, this would be an all-out story for two weeks, three weeks. It would be the headline on every single newspaper, every single left-wing Pravda outlet. This is what they would be talking about. You guys remember what they did, uh, the left wing Pravda media with the COVID death tickers. You guys remember that? It was the most clear and blatant corruption of the media I've ever seen. It was it was pure and obvious manipulation of the people by the media where they had the COVID death tickers at the bottom because they drummed up this narrative like the the COVID was somehow all Donald Trump's fault and that every single person that died was Donald Trump's fault. And so what they did was they put the COVID death tickers at the bottom of every single media outlet like MSNBC, CNN, and then they would just talk about that all the time, all the time. They would say, well, we, we lost another 10,000 innocent American citizens today, and they wouldn't you know, exclusively say – they wouldn't specifically say because of Donald Trump, but that's what the narrative was. That's what they were hinting to. And this is what they're they're masters at this. They are masters at manipulating the people. And then the moment Joe Biden got in the office, the death tickers all disappeared. And then it's like, I mean, it just blatantly obvious. And then they come out and say, oh, well, we took him down because, you know, it's we, we don't think it's right to flaunt the deaths of American citizens that died of COVID. So we took them all down. It's like, OK, yeah, that's that's really what it was. But you had them up for six, seven months before that talking about it every single day. I mean, that literally like the stock ticker at the bottom of the screen, they had a COVID death ticker. All right. And then also with the the fact checking literally stopped fact checking the moment the, the first 100 days of Joe Biden, Washington Post, The New York Times, all of them shut down their fact checking organizations, all of them sh shut down their fact checking departments. And when they were asked about this, it was because, well, you know, it's clear that since Donald Trump isn't in the White House, we don't have to to check the authenticity of anything Biden says. That's literally what they said. This is what the kind of stuff they said. It's like, OK, I mean, with the first hundred days, how many lies has Joe Biden said? This man is a is a habitual liar. He cannot speak to the public without lying. And they know that. And that's why they stopped fact checking. But you still have some outlets fact checking and it's awful. You have some like NPR um, or uh, PolitiFact that fact checks, and they're pretty ruthless sometimes on Joe Biden. But the thing is, is it's like they everything that they do is all just to feed their Trump deranged base. And so to say that this administration to a vote for Joe Biden is normal. Is just asinine. And so trust me, the story gets crazier and crazier. How this hasn't been resolved yet is beyond me. I think we all know why. It's because they know it was Hunter. They probably have footage of the guy leaving the bag wherever it was, and they don't want to release it. So I got an article here from the Gateway Pundit. Did Hunter Biden have the sniffles last night while watching the 4th of July fireworks at the White House? This is incredible. So on the little podium, the, uh, the balcony of the White House, you got Hunter Biden... Or, or you got Joe Biden, you got Jill Biden, you got the family, and you got Hunter Biden in the back. Well, there's video of this guy. It sucks that we're not a video podcast, but you got video of this guy turning around and literally doing a sniffle. Like, come on. I, I think everybody knows. We've seen enough movies. Everyone knows, maybe from personal experience, 
whenever somebody does cocaine, they're constantly messing with their nose, checking to make sure there's no cocaine boogies. And that's exactly what it looked like he did. He turned around. It's almost like he realized like maybe some cocaine was falling out of his nose. So he turned around real quick and did the old sniffle. And somebody, I don't know who this is, but somebody made commentary to this. And it's absolutely ruthless. Uh, Here, check this out. Listen to this. Hold on. I, I need another hit or I'll fall asleep. (laughs) <laughs> that was not Hunter Biden that said that. That was somebody else, but is somebody tweeted it and said, did someone say they needed a caption? <laughs> so, I mean, the guy absolutely nailed it perfect because I'd imagine that's exactly what was going through Hunter Biden's mind when he turned around. You just have to see it. I'm sure you're going to see the videos. It's everywhere, but it's not. I don't think people really care that Hunter Biden is a cokehead. I don't think anybody cares that he struggles with drug addiction. But the thing is, is I know how all this stuff works. And I'm telling you, it's the environment. You can't have you can't have two things happen at the same time and not honestly think that one has something to do with the other. So there's never been cocaine found in the White House before up until a crack addicted or former cokehead starts living there. So you got to correlate the two. I mean, there's just no there's just no other way around it. So anyways, this is this story is getting a lot crazier. Um, You actually have Congress getting involved now. You had Tom Cotton, which I'm not I'm not a huge fan of because, you know, I think he's just you know, he's he's good in certain things, but don't get it twisted. He is an establishment Republican, but he had something to say about this. Of course, you know, Joe Biden laughs off the questions about cocaine found in the White House. Uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, she just blows off the questions. Like, everybody wants to know, like, yo, dude, why is there cocaine in our White House? You know, that's our White House. And then if it's Hunter Biden's, then maybe the guy shouldn't be living there at the White House. Like, nobody finds this, like— a little concerning that we have a a coke addicted kid, a, a not a kid. It's crazy. They treat this guy like he's fifteen, a sixteen year old. The guy's in his fifties, I think. So nobody finds it a little bit concerning that we have a grown ass man addicted to coke and crack, and living at the White House where you have I don't know how many uh, uh, foreign adversaries coming over there. Not to mention. This guy's extremely long track record and shady track record of doing shady business deals with corrupt countries. Like everybody's supposed to be okay with this. This is insanity. This is asinine to think that this is okay. This is not normal. Nothing about this is normal. And I guarantee you, if the shoe was on the other foot, that this would be nonstop talked about all the time from the left wing media. They would probably want to impeach Donald Trump. They would demand drug screens from all the Trump family members. And they would say if there's any positive drug screens that they need to be removed from the White House because that's the taxpayer's home. That's the taxpayer's house. We pay for that house. That's the people's house. And there shouldn't be drugs moving in and out of it. That's what the story would be, folks. But now that it's Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, and the Biden family, everything is just a okay. Everything is normal. Nothing to see here. And, you know, thank God for whoever it was that found it actually turned it in because we probably never would have known about this. So that was just something quick I wanted to put out. I don't, I'm going to do a, a show later today talking about we, we got a big show planned. We, we got a, we got a few subjects to talk about. We're obviously going to talk about um, there was a couple things I wanted to talk about. I wanted to dig into ESG and what that is, the, the environmental social governance and, and what that means and how ESG is behind all this wokeism we're seeing spread through our country like a cancer. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. There's all kinds of stuff to talk about. The border, the southern border is still a mess. Nobody's talking about that. So I figured we'd touch base on that. There's just a lot of stuff going on as usual. And, you know, they said that this is supposed to be a, a vote back to normalcy, a vote to put the adults back in the White House. <laughs> OK, so we're going to this story is growing. There's still more happening with the cocaine story. Actually, you know what? I wanted to find Tom Cotton here. Let me. Um, yeah, so I got an article. Let me just go ahead and go through this. So. The senator challenges Secret Service over cocaine found at White House. This is this came out three hours ago. Hat tip to Caden Pearson. 
So Senator Tom Cotton on Wednesday pressed the U.S. Secret Service for details regarding its ongoing investigation into the discovery of cocaine at the White House. The Secret Service confirmed that the cocaine was found in the West Wing of the White House on Sunday, believed to have been brought in by someone who works there or had authorization to be there. This development has prompted Republican lawmakers to raise broader questions about the security and drug use at the presidential residence. In a letter to Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle, Mr. Cotton urged the agency to promptly provide information regarding the specific location within the White House complex where the substance was found. Quote, the American people deserve to know whether illicit drugs were found in an area where confidential information is exchanged, wrote Mr. Cotton. Yeah, so, you know... I kind of see where I I see the the tactic he's doing here. What he's trying to do is, again, this nobody is above the law. So if nobody's above the law and they find out that it's Hunter Biden's cocaine that was stashed in the White House, then Hunter Biden should be arrested by the Secret Service or whoever is uh, in control of the White House security. He should be arrested and charged for possession of cocaine. This is what I'm talking about. And this is exactly what Tom Cotton's talking about. If you're going to sit here and say you're the party of equal justice and nobody is above the law, then if Hunter Biden is responsible for stashing a dime bag of cocaine in the West Wing of the White House, then Secret Service or the security over there at the White House should be arresting him and charging him with possession of cocaine. I mean, it's that simple. And so I see where Tom Cotton's coming from and why he's trying to do this, because, again, This is not normal. So to have some cokeheads stashing cocaine and doing the sniffles out there on the White House balcony, this is this is not normal. And that and and that person's around confidential information. You see, it's like the the mental gymnastics one must have in order to justify all the madness that we're seeing in this family and in this White House the, the last two and a half years is astounding. It's impossible to justify this. It's unjustifiable. But what it is, is we have millions of people that are suffering from extreme denialism. They know by them coming out and saying this is wrong or saying this is abnormal, then that means that they voted for abnormalcy, that they voted for the opposite of what they told everybody else to. So they told everybody a vote for Biden is a vote for normalcy. Well, when it comes out, when it turns out that there's you know, after voting for Biden and there's there's cocaine and illicit drugs being found in the White House, that's pretty damn abnormal. And so they would have to admit that. And they're never going to admit that. So anyways, so the letter posed a series of questions to Miss Cheadle seeking clarification on the security of the complex and requesting the Secret Service's plan to address any identified security flaws. Quote, if the White House complex is not secure, Congress needs to know the details, as well as your plan to correct any security flaws, wrote Mr. Cotton, who is a member of the Subcommittee on Criminal Justice and Counterterrorism. He also requested a complete list of individuals who can enter the White House without undergoing full security screenings, as well as those who are subject to lesser security screening requirements than those entering the West Wing, along with the reason such individuals are not subject to complete screening. Mr. Cotton also asked for data on the Secret Service's use of canine screenings and information about audits conducted on their security procedures. The letter additionally inquired about the frequency of encounters with illegal drugs at the White House complex over the past five years. I'm telling you, it's none. Citing a section of the U.S. Code, Mr. Cotton asked whether the Secret Service would exercise its authority to make warrantless arrests for offenses committed in their presence or for any felony under federal law if the individual responsible for bringing cocaine into the White House is identified. Yeah, see, so this is his strategy. He's essentially saying, look, I want to know all the details. I want to know how if this person, if it, if it wasn't Hunter Biden, it was some person visiting the White House. I want to know how this person was able to get in to the West Wing, regardless of getting just in the White House. How did this person get into the West Wing of the White House with a dime bag of cocaine in their pocket? And how and why did this person stash this in the presidential library, I guess? See, the thing is, is we don't know. Like always with this administration, there's no transparency. There's obviously no trust and there's there's no answers for anything. So you don't know. There's no clarification. There's nothing. So, you know, they say it's in a part of the White House that's highly trafficked with 
Well, they make it sound like anyone could just go in there and chill in the lobby. That's not that's not the case. Every single person that goes to the White House first has to be there by invitation. Second needs to be screened. There's canine dogs. There's metal detectors. They're not just letting any blow schmo into the White House. So, you know, the media wants to make it think like this is, you know, a tourist that came in and set the dime bag of cocaine in the presidential library. No, folks, it's not. That's not it at all. They're trying to manipulate this story. This is what they do best, and we're not going to allow it. We're not We're not having that here, not on this show. We're going to call this crap out just like they would call it out if it was during the Trump presidency. So Senator Tom Cotton is doing it the right way. He wants to know what are the procedures for cocaine being found at the White House. Where's the footage? And if the person is identified, is that person going to be arrested, regardless of who it is? He didn't say if it's Hunter Biden, is he is he going to be arrested? He said, whoever it is, I want to know if they are identified, are they going to be arrested and charged? That's it. Because if we really do have equal justice under the law, then that's exactly what should happen. Whether it's Joe Biden, whether it's Hunter Biden or some blow schmo off the street or that was maybe it was Hunter Biden's drug dealer. Who knows? Who knows? When you have Hunter Biden, wherever Hunter Biden is, you're going to have trouble. Okay, because this guy is a loser, man. He is a loser. I don't care what anybody says. The guy is a loser. When you sit there, first of all, you bang your brother's widow. Okay, I don't even know. I don't know if they were married. You bang your brother's widow and then you cheat on your brother's widow with a stripper. You get that stripper pregnant and then you completely deny that the child is yours until the court orders you to pay money because a DNA test was done and it is yours. And then this loser, this this POS has the audacity to go to that judge and say I want to pay less money. When this guy's pulling in millions of dollars getting fat carrot diamonds from China and $140,000 Porsches from China, this is this guy is a loser. Not to mention that the the mom of the the baby's mama that's how we're going to do it this is this is normal talk now when when talking about the first family the baby's mama this turned into like some kind of Jerry Springer show and this is supposed to be normal so the baby's mama wanted their child to have the Biden last name because obviously if you're a Biden you benefit dramatically like you you benefit very much having the last name is Biden look at the entire family 30, 40, 50 million dollars all funneled through LLCs being dispersed throughout the family. So, yeah, I would want my kid to have the last name Biden, too. They rejected that. They did not want his kid having the last name Biden. They completely disregard this child as even being theirs. This family, the Biden family, is not what they told you it is. It is nothing what they tell you it is. This is a very corrupt. This family is a bunch of feral dogs. When you and 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 for instance, you know what? They have there's a website. This is what I want. This is what you can do. This is amazing. Um, I for I, I can't remember his name. I want to say it's Matt, Matt Trizler. Um, I can't remember. But he built a website that has the entire photos and locations and geolocations of the Hunter Biden laptop. And it's called BidenLaptopMedia.com. It's a free roam website. And it's literally pings every text message that was sent from his cell phone or his laptop it's technically his cell phone. Any pictures that were that were pinged in that location, and you can look at all these pictures. You can look on the inside of the Biden family, and I'm telling you, folks, these people are a bunch of feral dogs. They are. They are nothing what they tell the American people they are. And so I urge my listeners to go on this website. They put all the information there so that the people can do their own investigating. You really can. If you have a question, if you're like, man, where was Hunter Biden on this date? You can literally go to this website and see exactly where he was what, within the states. I don't know about different countries, but the way they lay this website out, it's very unique. And so they I don't know what kind of website it's not. It's it's like a map. It's it's almost like your your Google Maps or your iMaps. And when you click on a on a ping. It'll zoom in to that ping and it'll show a bunch of different pings. Like, so say if you hit on a ping in Delaware, you hit on, it goes over the state of Delaware and it shows hundreds of other pings and you pick on one of those pings and then it zooms in more and it shows you hundreds of other pings about where exactly, and you can literally locate, pinpoint exactly where he was when he sent that message on his phone. It's actually pretty cool. And they did that for a reason so that you, the American people can go in and see this family for exactly who they are. And so, again, if they want to say that nobody's above the law, 
that Senator Tom Cotton is exactly right. When they identify who it is, no, regardless of who it is, that person needs to be charged and arrested because me and you would be arrested and charged if we left a dime bag of cocaine anywhere. And they had us on video doing it. Certainly the White House. So again, equal justice under the law. It's clear and obvious that's not going to happen. And like I said, this family is nothing that they make you think it is. It is nothing. And you'll see that once you go on this website. And I'll post the website in my podcast description. These are very, very bad people. The Biden family are very awful people. Okay, and for the Biden family to completely disregard a granddaughter that is a is a Biden member by blood and for them to completely disregard that child, that tells you all you need to know. And that's exactly why people need to see this family for who it is. They, they try to convince you it was the Trump family that was abnormal. It was the Trump family that was awful. I don't see them doing anything like this. I never seen cocaine pop up in the White House. I never seen any of the Trump kids going out dating their brother's widow and then cheating on that widow and having a kid with a stripper and then denying that that kid is even yours. Like th- this is not normal. And they want to they want to convince the people that it is. And it's just not. And again, a lot of the Democrats and Democrat pollsters think that this is this doesn't matter to the American people. It absolutely does. When you're the first family, you're held to a higher pedestal, right? That's what they said about the Trump family. You should be held to a higher standard. Well, what about this? With the Biden family, it's almost like they want us to lower our standards, lower the bar of expectations. When with Donald Trump, they wanted to hire the bar and it was they wanted to raise the standards so that anything Donald Trump did was never good enough. Nothing. The complete and obvious hypocrisy is is astounding. And it's not even hypocrisy. It's hierarchy. It's like they, they want to hold these people in a totally different standard all by themselves to where there's there's one standard, their standard. And that's it. And this is what we're dealing with. So I think it's important that. You know, my fellow content creators and podcasters and YouTubers and 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 rumble video makers, all of everybody should be talking about this. I know it seems redundant to talk about cocaine being found in the White House when Hunter Biden is obviously a coke addict. But it's it's important that the American people know that everything they told you about the Biden family is a lie. And it's not just with the Biden family. It's everything. This goes deeper into everything that they tell you is a lie. Nothing is what they tell you it is. And that is why I decided to do this story. So I think I got everything in there. I just I wanted to make sure that the story got out and that you guys got to hear. I'm sure you're hearing all about it. It's the talk of the town. And obviously, it's still under investigation. Hopefully, they release the video footage of who it was. And hopefully, they they arrest somebody and press charges for having cocaine in our White House. I think it's disgraceful that somebody brought cocaine into my White House. That's your White House. That's our house. That's not the Biden family's house. They just they live there for four years. We're allowing them to stay like an Airbnb for four years. So and let's hope it's only four years. Um, Anyways, that's all I got. I just want to do a quick show. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. And as always, if you want to get a hold of me, or if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me at Stephen Torriello show at gmail.com. I'm going to jump into another episode right after this. We're going to be talking about some uh, ESG, DEI, the Bud Light saga continues, why that's so important and why. And, and obviously there was some there's some stuff happening with the Trump document case and judges recusing themselves and, and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Plenty of stuff to talk about. And I want to make sure that I, my listeners I want to make sure my listeners get all the important stuff that they need to know that I think it's important for you to know, because informed people make good decisions and uninformed people make bad decisions. So we definitely want all my listeners and anybody listening to be informed. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in. And I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. And God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.